This is lesson four, build the database, exercise 4G, prepare the block group data. In this exercise, we'll work with block groups, which we're using to represent neighborhoods. Our preparation will focus on the block group attributes. That's what will tell us if a potential location meets our demographic requirements, like is the population density high enough? Is the household income low enough? Are there enough kids? The block group attributes already have the basic ingredients to answer these questions, but we need to do some calculations on them to get the exact information we need. Our first objective is to get the block group's shapefile into the ReadyData GeoDatabase. We'll start by turning off fields we don't need in the layer properties, like we did with the cities and the counties in Exercise 4D. Then we'll use a tool called Convert Feature Class to Feature Class to bring the data into ReadyData. As part of the conversion, we'll rename and alias some of the fields. Our second objective will be to add fields to the new output table and calculate population density. Our third objective will be to add a couple more fields and calculate the percentage of children. We still have the same map document open from the last exercise. Let's review the data requirements table. In rows 8 through 10, we're using the block groups data set for our key demographic attributes. In the preparation column, we have to do calculations for population density in age under 18. In the catalog window, under source data, under census, add block groups to the map. We get a coordinate systems warning, which reminds us that this data needs to be projected. Close it. Zoom to the block groups layer to have a look at it. Open its attribute table and scroll across. Once again, we have lots of extra attributes. It really doesn't hurt anything, but it gets in the way. Close the table. Open the layer properties. On the fields tab, turn off all the fields, and then turn back on just the ones we want. We'll keep ID and state abbreviation kind of for reference. Tote pop underscore CY is total population for the current year 2009 data. Pop 18 up underscore CY is population 18 or older. MED HINC underscore CY is median household income. To get this data into the geodatabase, we can just right click on Ready Data, point to Import, and choose Feature Class Single. This opens the Feature Class to Feature Class conversion tool. The input features are block groups. We'll type a name for the output feature class. In the field map area, you can change the attribute properties so they come out a little different than they go in. Right click ST underscore abbreve and choose properties. Change the field name to state, which is planar. Change the alias too. Our convention for field names is all caps, but that's fine. Click OK. And open the tote pop underscore CY properties. Change the name to tote pop and leave out the underscore CY, which is a little confusing, and make the alias total space POP. We'll also change the field type of the data from long integer to short integer. The long type accepts bigger numbers, but uses more storage space, as discussed on page 144 of the book. Click OK. Open the properties for pop18up underscore CY. Change the name. Change the alias to pop over 18. Pop over 18 and over might be better, but okay. Change the data type to short integer. Click OK. And finally, median hi inc underscore cy. New name and meaningful alias. Okay, the tool is ready. By the way, it's also going to project the data to state plan coordinates because our environment settings are still in place. Click OK, and the tool runs. The new feature class shows up in Ready Data, and a layer gets added to the map. Let's remove the old block group layers and open the table for the new one. It just has the fields we wanted to keep with the aliases we gave them. Right click the total pop field and choose Properties. The field name, alias, and data type all match what we set in the tool. Click Cancel. That completes our first objective of importing the block groups into Ready Data. The next thing we want to do is add a couple of fields to the table so we can calculate the population density. We'll express population density in terms of people per square mile, which means we first need a field to store square miles. Click the Table Options button and choose Add Field. Name it SQ Miles. Set the field type to double. 
we pretty much always use this type for fields that store calculated area values. And we'll type in alias, same as the name, but with a space. We need one more field for the population density values. Click Table Options, Add Field. Name it Pop Density, no spaces. Make it a float, which means it can store decimal points. Alias it. Click OK. And the new fields show up at the end of the table. We'll just open the block group feature class properties here to show that the new fields are now part of the feature class structure. OK, let's close that. Scroll across the table. Right click the square miles field and choose calculate geometry. Now we get a warning because calculating values is like a global attribute edit. ArcMap is saying, make sure you're not overwriting critical data. Since you're not in an edit session, there's no undo. But we're fine, and this warning is kind of a nuisance. So we'll check the box not to see it again and click yes to continue. The property we're calculating is area and the units we want are square miles. Click OK and the values are written to the table. Now right click pop density and choose field calculator. This is for all calculations that aren't based on pure geometry. Pop density is going to be total pop divided by square miles. Click OK and the results show up in the table. The last thing is to add a couple more fields to calculate the percentage of children. Click Table Options, Add Field. Name it POP under 18. Short integer is fine, and alias it. POP under 18 is the first step to what we really want, which is the percentage. So we'll add one more field, call it PCT under 18. Make it a float because we might want to store decimal points and alias it. OK. Now right click pop under 18 and choose field calculator. Clear the last expression. What we want is total population minus population 18 and up. Click OK to calculate the values and they show up in the table. One complication. Percent under 18 is basically going to be pop under 18 divided by total pop. But some records have zeros for total pop because no one lives in that block group. This could mess up our formulas with division by zero. So we need to do two separate calculations. First, the block groups that actually have people in them. Click the Select by Attributes button and select where total pop is greater than zero. Verify and apply. That selects almost all the records. Now we'll calculate the percentage under 18 for the big set. Right click percent under 18 field calculator. Clear the last expression. The population under 18 divided by the total population times 100 gives us the percentage. And calculate. The few unselected records have total pop values of zero. No one lives there, so no one is under 18. So the percentage under 18 is also zero. Click the Switch Selection button and click Yes to continue. Right click percent under 18, Field Calculator. Clear the expression. Type zero. Click OK. The selected records are set to zero. Clear the selection, close the table, and we're done. The block group's data have been converted and our attributes are ready for analysis.